Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Yep. Check out our podcast below in the description. All right, John. We've got breaking news on Sunday night. The Raiders have blamed Paul Gunther for Jonathan Abram not being able to cover and Khalil Mack getting traded and fired him. <laughs> tough, uh, tough gig. Well, I saw Paul Gutierrez relieved him of his duties. Relieved. relieved. Is, that, is that the nice way of saying, get the fuck out of here? Well, don't you think he feels relieved today? He has to a little bit. Now, I think the problem for him is his defense. I had a coach tell me one time, you always want to become a coordinator because then you get in the cycle. I do wonder, his cycle, he was here for, I guess, the first three years of Gruden, and it was a disaster. I mean, they were really, really ugly. I'll never say never, but I, I don't really feel he's going to be in the cycle anytime soon, right? No, I mean, it's, yes, being relieved is not actually a relief <clears> because <throat> you've been fired. Now, if I was Baker Mayfield's uh, wife, if I was Aisha Curry, and I was a member of Gutierrez, or not Gutierrez, Paul Gunther's family, because typically the wives, and the they're always arguing on Twitter, defending their but defending their man it's like yeah no shit family members defend other family members shocker i would say that this defensive roster since paul gunther has stepped in is atrocious it has to be if we went player for player over the three-year period but just right now after they just got steamrolled by the colts and really it feels like steamrolled all year long in their best team of the three years I, it has to be like bottom five player for player on defense in the NFL guy. It's just no pass rusher. I guess Mullen is okay. Uh, Abram stinks. Linebackers stink. They're just, they're awful. I don't know what to tell you. Like they're yeah. just, it, look, they're just I, not very good. They got beat by the Colts on a day when I watched them and that, we've had games like the Jets game, uh, the Falcons game where you watch them and go, what is this? That's not what I thought watching them against the Colts. And that's a problem. Because they just got their butts kicked, and it wasn't a, what is this? It was a, no, nah, they're better than you, and this is what it looks like. If they're going to be better than you, um, you're not going to beat them. Like, it was, All 44 it, I, points were not on Paul, right? Derek threw the pick no, six no, no. off. The There's no question. But I just think watching them, like, my takeaway watching the Raiders was they've peaked until their defense can get much better. Now, if you just replace him, does that solve your problem? No. Like, they need – much better players on defense, to your point. So I, I don't. There, there's still a way. Like this isn't a problem. This is part of trying to fix the problem, but this doesn't begin to solve it. I think it's fair to say that <clears throat> in football, but at the highest level in in the NFL, you can over scheme stuff, or I guess you know out scheme opponents and out scheme talent easier on offense yeah. in the NFL than it is on defense pretty consistently. And I think the Niners are a good example last year when your team is really good. It's just going to hard to, if your players, if you have four or five pro bowlers at the key positions, pass rusher, corner, middle linebacker, your defense is going to be really good. And you don't really need to call that many exotic plays. We're on offense. Like I can get away with average quarterback play. If I got good receivers, if I got a good scheme, it does not work on defense. Like the even uh, there's just the 85 Bears were defi they had Hall of Famers the 2001 or 2000 Ravens that we talk about forever Hall of Famers the LOB defense with Pete Carroll Hall of Famers uh, the Niners team with Harbaugh I mean I don't know if they're gonna ha how many of those guys are gonna make Hall of Famers but they were sure all look like Hall of Famers when they were there yeah you have to have really good players and I think they have two. I don't want to say historic misses, but two crippling misses on this team. They drafted Cleveland Farrell number four overall. They could have had Devin White, who's one of the best linebackers in the league. If you just flip-flop those two players, I think they're dramatically better. And Jonathan Abram is just much more whiff than hit right now. It doesn't work, guy. He does not translate to the modern-day NFL. Well, and that's that's Gruden and a Mayock problem. And it, and it becomes, obviously, you don't the GM doesn't fire himself. The head coach doesn't fire himself. That's not what should be happening today anyway. But this is about, you know, it makes the what you just said makes the, the Khalil Mack trade a failure, right? The defensive coordinator got traded for the team that traded away one of the best defensive players in the league. Yeah. Why aren't you good right now? Your <clears throat> defense isn't good. You traded away one of the best defensive players in the league. So you get like, oh, yeah, but the value in the – your defense isn't good. 
Your defense is what's keeping you from being better. You traded away one of the best defensive players in the league, and then you did not use the ammunition you got. I know it looks great on paper, the value, to make your defense better. It's not, we can't, This the, the case closed. The guy it got didn't fired. Yeah. The defensive coordinator got fired. It failed. And, and to me, fired, we're recording this probably less than three hours after the game finished, right? That's yeah. in the season. To me, guys and get not, fired. And we're not saying he shouldn't have been fired. <clears throat> yeah, I just think guys get fired in the NFL. It's, it's a huge part of the sport. Players get released. Coaches get fired. For the most part, <laughs> guys are released in the offseason, and coaches are fired after the season. Anytime a coach gets fired with games left to be played, that is a huge story. Right in, in the NFL, whether you're at the Bengals or whether you're at the the Steelers or the Eagles, I mean, that's Adam just, Gase has not been fired. As of yeah, that, that's a headliner story. When Bill O'Brien's removed, when any coordinator on Greg Williams last week fired, like that's just it's just a whoa moment. And this one, a little desperation with the three games remaining, hopefully to catch a little lightning in the bottle, try to win out and give yourself a chance. Yeah, I mean, you need the Ravens to lose Monday, but you're right, and you reminded me that the Raiders play Thursday. But desperation would have been nice in the third quarter when you're kicking field goals from the five yard line. Well, one was from the one was from the seven was like a fourth and goal, but you know they did not coach as it like maybe it's easy to ha- to have hindsight here, um, but Gruden didn't coach the third quarter against the Colts like he do the Colts were going to score, you know, twenty one more points, which has been the mo. But I understand. I, I get from his perspective. Like, so I just supposed to just assume my defense going to give up forty five and coach like that. Um, I'd say with the evidence you have, you probably should. But again, your staff, your players. They're, they're, of all the teams, right, we don't truly know, like, does Pete Carroll really still pick the players? You've been letting Schneider do that for a decade. Like, even Andy would be like, Veach is doing it all, but you're like, does Andy really, if you didn't know, right, you'd ask these questions. I, I'd say we said at the moment he got hired and the moment he gave him the keys to the castle and the moment we'd been a, we'd spent a lot of time, you and I, around that organization, we went, Belichick has the most juice probably by far, but his owner kind of can, no one. I mean, if Belichick's one, Gruden is 1A. Everything in the fucking building, from players to coaches to whatever he wants, the owner, it's without hesitation. So this is, like you said, his handpick, all the players. Like, there is no question, that was a Mayock guy. Well, Gruden had to say yes if that's a Mayock guy. <laughs> because, and that's where I think it gets difficult with, like, why they take Cleveland Farrell? Well, I don't know. It's just hard to tell. But I know this. No one got drafted on that team. Whether Reggie was around, whether Mack was around, whether Paul Gunther was pushing for the defensive player, without John Gruden's approval. And we cannot say that. It's one thing to be like, Pete, be like, yeah, take whoever you want, John. I trust you. It's another thing to like, this is his bad boy. This is his organization. Probably even closer to Belichick, given how much influence he could have over the owner to do like a business move if he wanted. There is not a guy who probably with more juice, honestly, the more I think about it. Like, Belichick's got a lot, should have more, but John has to be, you could argue with, if you factor in Mark Davis, he's the has more power than any coach in the league, right? Yeah, and the, the length of his contract. I mean, there, there's no question. If you think the best, think about the best coaches in the league, they don't. Andy, I would not imagine, has more power in Kansas City. Sean Payton certainly does not in New Orleans. Kyle Shanahan does not. Sean McVay does not. Would you say it's almost like Saban-like at Alabama? You know, just in how much yeah. anything he says goes, you know, no matter what, if John and, says and, it, it goes. And that's not necessary. Like from an organizational standpoint, Mark Davis would be like, yeah, I'm giving him everything. I paid him. I'm going to give him everything he says he needs. I don't blame Mark I Davis no at all. It's, it's, yeah. No problem. None. None. And I got no problem firing. That's the other thing. I got no problem firing Paul Gunther. That's whatever. That's fine. But like the, you still got a long way to go to figure this thing out. And based on the players that they've picked on defense, well, it's, it's trending as we're recording this, and you just look at the scenarios. I saw the dude at NBC halftime, the percentages. The Raiders are like <laughs> low 30s. So it's still not – it's not like five. Yeah. But th- they are mo- more than unlikely a playoff team this year. They're they going to need – the things Ravens are out of their lose. control. There are things out of their control. Yeah. And that's a failure. Given where the season started, I thought they should be a playoff team. Given where they were about when October ended, you're like six and three – they're going to end up probably 11 and five. Even They are, I hate the word regressed 
Because, like, I don't think players or teams regress. I just think you kind of are who you are sometimes over you fail, a Sometimes you fail, sometimes you succeed. There's so many circumstances. I totally agree. The Raiders got really shitty really fast, kind of randomly. It was kind of weird. And the they were playing too. a lot better the first nine games, guy. Six and yeah. three, they were a legitimate team. The eye test, too, right? It's not just, it's like, I watched them play that game against the Jets. I watched them play that game against the Falcons. I watched them play the Colts, and I thought, one of these is clearly a playoff team. The other one is not up to this team standard. And it was pretty clear by the end of the game who was who. So It's a devastating moment not paying, inside their building if they miss the playoffs, right? Yeah, you're not paying. I mean, I'll do the, I'll do the simple math. I know it's, is the contract front-loaded or back-loaded, but let's just yeah, say Yeah, remember he wasn't dollars. making as much in California to taxes, and it was like eight here and like 11 a year yeah. there. Let's just say you've paid $30 million for zero playoff appearances in three years if you don't make the playoffs this year. But to me, it's not, but that, that that sounds really bad. I think why it feels really bad is just because like a month ago you're like, "Fuck, we're we're in the driver's seat. Yeah. We've already beat the Chiefs. We're six and three. How many teams six and three with a team over with with a couple good wins like the Saints and the Chiefs? If we just look back over the last couple of decades, don't make the playoffs. That have a good quarterback. That have a good offense. Like it's, I'd imagine it's pretty unheard of, guy. It's one thing to be like to me the seven and five. It can go a little bit. Obviously, a six and six. To me, once you get to like six, seven, and you're multiple games different from your loss column, you just start doing the math. And I think the other thing with the Raiders guy is we looked at the schedule. We're like, well, you got the Jets, you got the the Falcons, then you got the Chargers. It got away from them. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't see it coming. I didn't either. I thought they were a lock playoff team. Sometimes I thought they were a lock playoff team. Extra playoff spot. Like, are now? I don't think the Dolphins are going to make the playoffs. I think the Ravens will. But I think the not the the Raiders well, the, the percentage the percentage guy had basically Indianapolis and Cleveland is like above ninety, so they they they, they gave the Ravens the best chance. Better but Miami, Miami still has another win, and yeah. they play the Raiders. Like, are the Raiders a lock to beat Miami? They're just no, not. No, and, and if Miami were to somehow make the playoffs, you'd go. Wait a second, how much is Brian Flores getting paid? Because if you said at the beginning of the year, one but of that's teams- what. But he's not saying that. Who's not saying that? I don't think Mark Davis is saying that, though. Thinking no, like that. I'm saying that. I'm saying, wait yeah, a second. Fans. The Dolphins? The Dolphins? Mm-hmm. The team that was just drafting second? They made the playoffs? Well, I, well, I think it's a, Yeah. Well, I, no, think, I don't think they will, but... I think the hard part for the fans is you're going... If the Dolphins make it, if the Browns clearly make it, which they're in the driver's seat, you start going, wait, Stefanski, year one? Uh, Flores in year two, they're already competing. Like, wh- what is holding us back? What is – because even if John is the offensive coordinator, offensive guy, part of John was like, well, it's the personality. Parcell's a defensive guy, but the, he impacts the whole team. Like, does John have no impact on defense of just the mentality? Is he just in his own little offensive bubble? We talk a lot about – think about McVay's defense has been really good since he's been there. Really, Kyle's defense the last couple of years, this year, falling apart a little bit, but statistically it's still top half of the league easily. Like I mean, there, there is a mentality in a, in a set, but yeah, but it's like Gruden is the boss. So he, he, does he have a bad eye for talent? Like, it's just, there are a lot of checks that if, if you were being really critical, you'd be like, this isn't big, good, big picture. Right. It's a little scary that this, because the irony is like, they're, it turned out their offense, like he got it turned around, he saved a quarterback and it was like, they were heading the right direction, but he, two things are going to let him down. He just wasn't a great evaluator, and two, he wasn't good at hiring coaches. But I think there's a chance Paul Gunther's good enough if their talent's better. Yeah, hard to know. It's hard to know, but if they nail the two picks, if they nail the two, if they nail the Uh, Abram, Cleveland, I mean, it's just, again, their offense is good enough. You don't need to be the Anthony Munoz of defenses. Well, let's say I give them these. let's, Let's say I give them these two players. They get the equivalent of like Roquan Smith, who's Devin White, and like let's say Jonathan Abrams, Jimmy Ward. Think how much better their defense would be, right? An extra tackle, an extra third down, get off the field and third down. Maybe a play over the course of a year, a pick six or a fumble. Yeah, like it just it's a le- less of a blown, co- less of a guy running wide open down the middle of the field. Jonathan Abrams has been a disaster. He, he really has because he missed all last year and now he's kind of hurting him. He's been, I'd say, a net negative. Well, he's hurt when he's hurt, and he hurts you when he's healthy. And w- wouldn't you say that's really bad, given that, like, they did, 
when you looked at it, like he was going to be, if they were going to be good, and I don't, good would be strong. If they were going to be functional, he was going to be a key part of that. First yeah. round pick, physical guy. And I'd understand if you nailed those picks, it's like, okay, maybe you didn't get Khalil Mack, but whatever. You had to do, you, you did what you had to do. You got cheaper. You got two players for one on defense. Fine. The other problem with the whole Khalil Mack thing guy is one of the guys they acquired, the best group guy they've acquired in the last couple of years, high in the draft, is Josh Jacobs. As I text you earlier today, like a running back's a little bit like a second baseman. Like if you were going to hit on one guy, you'd obviously choose like, if you, hey, I just go to random GM. You're going to hit a home run on a guy. And I wouldn't say Josh Jacobs a home run. Third, a triple. You're going to hit a triple on a guy. What positions would you want? Well, it's like quarterback, uh, pass rusher, uh, offensive tackle, uh, wide receiver. Like I, where would, run, would running back pass be rusher? Like above guard? Linebacker? <laughs> uh. Depends on your line. It could go above guard. Could. Well, that's what, but I, that's that's where it is in the discussion, like way down. That's the problem. So, yeah, Josh Jacobs is a really good player. But his impact, and we've seen it with guys that are better than him, like Saquon Barton, you can't – the problem is they missed on the, the cover guy and the pass rusher. And now that's getting guys fired in the middle of seasons before a, a short week. Yeah, yeah. No, it's – and Gruden deserves the blame, not Paul Gunther. Who does too? Yeah, I mean, again, it's not that he doesn't deserve blame. It's just this is about personnel also. It's just, and if you had replaced Khalil Mack, you traded him, but Khalil and Furl's a good player. He didn't even have to be another pass rusher. doesn't even necessarily have to be that you hit on the picks that you got for Khalil. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just yeah. saying you subtracted Khalil. You, it's part, you had a bunch of picks. You haven't. Your defense is not any, your defense is worse. Awful. So, yeah. But at least we get them on Thursday.